every nation around the world has its fair share of problems, but there are certain nations which have more than others. Which 10 nations around the world have the most problems? Let's explore them and explain why. Modern humanity has allowed the world to become a more organized place by creating sovereign borders, thus allowing nations to have control over their own affairs. While this has been successful, some nations have run into rampant problems, both physically and socially. In this week's episode, we are going to see which 10 nations around the world, in no particular order, have the most problems and issues. We'll identify them and explain why these nations are plagued by calamities. Before we start, if you enjoy geography, both physical and human geography, you'll like this channel. So be sure to subscribe to my channel, Our World, Our Planet, Our Home, to view more videos. Let's get started. Let's start in the Western Hemisphere and head to the Caribbean island of Hispaniola. While the Dominican Republic on the eastern side of the island is doing well, its western neighbor of Haiti isn't. Haiti was renowned for being the second nation in the Western Hemisphere to gain independence in 1804 after the United States. Haiti's constitution was established in 1805 after its successful revolution against French colonial rule, making it the first independent black republic in the world. But things unraveled rather quickly in the later part of the 19th century as Haiti went through political instability, international isolation, and a nearly 12-year war with the Dominican Republic, which proved costly. The 20th century wasn't any better, as the nation was occupied by the U.S. from 1915 to 1934, and then ruled by father and son dictators Francois and Jean-Claude Dauvier. After their reign, Haiti's political instability continued, with a coup in 2004, and then a major earthquake in January of 2010, which killed over 100,000 people and displaced millions from their homes. The earthquake was followed by a cholera outbreak, which killed 10,000, and Hurricane Matthew, which caused heavy rains and landslides, killing hundreds of people. Then five years later, on July 7, 2021, President Jovenel Moise was assassinated, and one month later, another major earthquake occurred, adding more insult to injury. Since then, Haiti has plunged into chaos with constant gain violence, deteriorating humanitarian conditions, and a collapse of the whole government. Without a suitable government, Haiti will continue to be plagued by social issues, which unfortunately will be further deteriorated by natural disasters, ones which will likely occur again. Heading down to South America, Venezuela used to be the richest nation on the continent, but times have changed. Now, the nation of 30 million people has a GDP of $211 billion and a per capita income of $3,400 a year, way lower than 15 years ago. Venezuela has always been a nation rich with oil and has the largest reserves in the world. During the early to mid-2000s, Socialist President Hugo Chavez spent this money on social programs called Bolivarian Missions, which initially did improve the quality of life of poor Venezuelans. However, by the early 2010s, problems started to arise as oil prices dropped. Since Venezuela didn't diversify its economy, this led to a major financial crisis with the collapsing GDP, shortages of everyday items, and hyperinflation. When Hugo Chavez died in 2013, Nicolas Maduro, another socialist, became president. But through the 2010s, his administration became more and more autocratic. Although elections did occur, they were seen as corrupt and rigged, pretty much making Maduro a dictator. Today, conditions in Venezuela are deplorable, leading to mass migration out of the nation. Pretty much, if the geopolitical situation there doesn't improve, neither will the nation. In the mountains of West Asia, Afghanistan has been plagued by problems ever since it became a nation. The country is at the crossroads between the Middle East and South Asia, thus influencing its cultural attributes. In addition, 
While Afghanistan has never been colonized formally, it has been affected by outside influences, two including the British and the Russians, particularly during the Great Game, in which both tried to take over the nation. In the late 1970s, Afghanistan became a communist satellite state of the Soviet Union, and throughout the 1980s, the US and allied nations armed the Taliban, Islamic resistance fighters, to try and defeat the Soviets. After the Cold War, Afghanistan's government changed again, but rampant instability led to the Taliban taking over the government, where they turned the nation into an autocratic Islamic state plagued with numerous human rights issues. Also, the Taliban and Al-Qaeda, another Islamic extremist group, became enemies of the United States and the West because of a geopolitical shift in diplomacy during the 1990s. After 9-11, the U.S. and NATO allies invaded Afghanistan, leading to the nation becoming a presidential republic in 2004. However, after the American pullout in August of 2021, the Taliban took over the nation in a matter of weeks, leading to extensive democratic backsliding. Today, Afghanistan has numerous socioeconomical problems. The country is grappling with widespread poverty, food insecurity, and economic collapse. Over 29 million people need humanitarian assistance, with 15.8 million facing acute food insecurity. The Taliban's increasingly oppressive laws severely restrict women's rights and girls' freedoms, banning most from education and employment. Overall, Afghanistan is a nation with many troubles which aren't going to improve anytime soon. In South Asia, Myanmar, formerly known as Burma, is a nation of 55 million people. From the late 19th century to the mid 20th century, current day Myanmar was known as British Burma under control of the British Empire. In 1948, Burma became independent and during the 1950s was on track to become a democracy. But in 1962, a military coup ensued and the nation became a totalitarian military state until 2011. That year, Myanmar experienced a significant political shift as it began transitioning from decades of military rule to a quasi-civilian government, which resulted in political and economic reforms. Things were heading in the right direction, but a decade later, in February 2021, another military coup occurred. The coup sparked widespread protest and a violent crackdown by the military, leading to thousands of deaths and the displacement of civilians. Myanmar has since faced intense internal conflict between the military junta and various ethnic armed groups, as well as pro-democracy resistance forces. The situation has resulted in severe humanitarian crises, including food shortages, displacement, and economic collapse. Additionally, Myanmar's isolation due to sanctions and a loss of foreign investment has worsened its economic and social conditions. The situation is so bad that some say the nation is more autocratic than North Korea. Hopefully, one day, Myanmar could become a stable democracy, but that's a long road ahead. Speaking of North Korea, this nation is next. North Korea, officially known as the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, was established in 1948 following the end of Japanese colonial rule in Korea after World War II. The Korean Peninsula was divided along the 38th parallel, with the Soviet Union controlling the North and the United States controlling the South, eventually leading to the formation of two separate nations, North Korea and South Korea. North Korea's first leader, Kim Il-sung, developed a highly centralized and authoritarian regime rooted in the ideology of juice or self-reliance. In 1950, North Korea invaded the South, sparking the Korean War, which ended in a stalemate in 1953, leaving the peninsula divided to this day. Today, Kim Jong-un, the grandson of Il-sung, is the leader, since his father's death, Kim Jong-il, in 2011. Kim Jong-un hasn't proven to be any better than his predecessors, as North Korea is still regarded as being one of the most autocratic nations. 
The nation is known for its strict state control, human rights abuses, nuclear ambitions, and tense relations with much of the international community while maintaining close ties with China. While there have been possibilities of reunification between the North and the South, it's unlikely it will happen in the foreseeable future, considering that the North wants the South to reunify, but at their own terms and conditions. Obviously, South Korea will never do this, as they're considered a capitalist high-income democracy. In West Asia, the Middle East is an area of oddities, as some nations are extremely rich and stable, while others are extremely poor and unstable. Syria is one that's unstable. The nation has always been volatile geopolitically, but things turned for the worse in 2011. That year, the Arab Spring, a series of pro-democracy uprisings and protests erupted in North Africa and the Middle East. Peaceful protests against the authoritarian rule of President Bashir al-Assad were met with violent crackdowns by the government. This ultimately split into four separate factions, sparking the Syrian civil war. The pro-Assad faction, backed by Russia and Iran, opposition rebel groups, backed by Western countries such as the United States, ISIS, an Islamic extremist group that saw Syria as a weakened state to set up control, and Kurdish forces, primarily in the north, who seek autonomy from Syria, Turkey, Iran, and Iraq. The war has resulted in massive destruction, over a half million deaths, and millions of Syrians displaced or seeking refuge abroad. Despite the defeat of ISIS and Assad's forces regaining control of much of Syria, this conflict has left the country fractured with ongoing humanitarian crises and regional instability. Also, growing escalations in other parts of the Middle East, including with Israel, Palestine, and Lebanon, will likely spill over to Syria, further destabilizing the fragile nation. On the southwestern edge of the Arabian Peninsula, Yemen is another nation with many troubles. Yemen has a long history of political instability, tribal conflicts, and economic hardship. Historically divided into North and South Yemen, the country unified in 1990, but tensions between the regions persisted. Corruption, poor governance, and economic underdevelopment have plagued the country for decades. Yemen has also struggled with the influence of powerful tribes, military groups like Al-Qaeda, and external interference from regional powers, particularly Saudi Arabia and Iran. Since 2015, Yemen has been embroiled in the devastating civil war between Houthi rebels who control the north and a Saudi-backed government in the south, leading to widespread famine, displacement, and one of the world's worst humanitarian crises. Unfortunately, further Middle Eastern escalations will spill over into Yemen, making humanitarian issues even worse. Across the Red Sea, Somalia, located in the Horn of Africa, has been plagued by numerous problems throughout its history. In ancient times, it was part of key trade routes connecting Africa, Arabia, and India, and was home to powerful sultanates such as the Ajuran and Jelity. In the late 19th century, European powers colonized Somalia, with Britain and Italy dividing control over the region. After World War II, Somalia gained independence in 1960, uniting British and Italian territories into one nation. Following independence, Somalia faced political instability, culminating in a military coup in 1969, which brought Syed Bar to power. His regime eventually collapsed in 1991, plunging the country into civil war and leading to the rise of warlords and clan-based fighting. The central government disintegrated and Somalia endured years of lawlessness. Today, Somalia is a nation with many troubles, as it is considered one of the least developed countries in the world. Many of its social problems stem from its physical geography, as the nation experiences dry conditions throughout most of the year, making only 2% of the land arable. Also, its location between North Central Africa and the Middle East has made the nation a hotbed for Islamic extremist groups, including Al-Shabaab and Al-Qaeda, 
both of whom have imposed Sharia law in parts of Somalia. Heading into Central Africa, Sudan, located in the southeastern part of the Sahara Desert, has many problems. In the 19th century, Sudan was colonized by the British and Egyptians, leading to significant cultural and political changes. Following World War II, Sudan gained independence in 1956. However, the new nation faced civil strife, notably the First Sudanese Civil War and the Second Civil War, primarily between the North and South over religious and cultural differences. The latter conflict culminated in South Sudan gaining independence in 2011. In late 2018, widespread protests erupted in Sudan after the government decided to triple the price of goods at the time when inflation was 70%. Omar al-Bashir was the president from 1993 to 2019, but he was accused of being a harsh dictator who was responsible for genocide and war crimes. These accusations, coupled with the protest, led to a military coup in April 2019 which ousted al-Bashir and created a transitional government. Sudan is currently in a state of extreme crisis driven by violent conflict, humanitarian disaster, and widespread displacement. The power struggle between the Sudanese armed forces and the rapid support forces erupted in April 2023, leading to intense fighting that has ravaged parts of the country, particularly in Darfur. Humanitarian conditions are dire, with over half the population facing critical food shortages. Famine has been declared in some areas, such as the Zamzam camp in North Darfur. The conflict, combined with flooding and disease outbreaks, has overwhelmed health services and worsened the situation for vulnerable groups like women and children. Unfortunately, it looks like the dire conditions in Sudan are going to continue and not improve anytime soon. While Europe has the most nations that are considered highly developed and not unstable, it doesn't mean that there aren't any. Ukraine, in Eastern Europe, is nowadays the continent's most unstable nation, with the Russo-Ukrainian War playing a big part in this. Located at the crossroads of Europe and Asia, it was once part of the Kievan Rus, a powerful medieval state. Over the centuries, Ukraine was ruled by various empires, including the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, the Ottoman Empire, and the Russian Empire. It briefly gained independence in 1917 after the Russian Revolution, but was soon absorbed into the Soviet Union. Eventually, Ukraine did gain independence from the Soviet Union in 1991 after the Cold War ended. However, its troubles was far from over. Ukraine's political turmoil between 1990 and 2014 was driven by its struggle to define its identity and geopolitical alignment. In 2004, the Orange Revolution erupted after allegations of electoral fraud in favor of the pro-Russian candidate Viktor Yanukovych in the presidential election. Massive protests led to a revolt and the pro-Western candidate Viktor Yushchenko was elected. However, internal political conflicts and economic troubles weakened Yoshenko's presidency. Yanukovych returned to power in 2010, deepening Ukraine's ties with Russia. His refusal to sign an association agreement with the European Union in 2013 sparked the Euromaidan protest where Ukrainians demanded closer ties with Europe and an end to corruption. In 2014, Russia annexed Crimea from Ukraine, leading to worsening instability in the nation, ultimately leading to a full-scale invasion by Russia in February of 2022. Today, Ukraine's government, led by Vladimir Zelensky, is seeking to defeat Russia from a total takeover of the nation. The war is going on nearly three years and has led to many socioeconomic problems including the displacement of millions of Ukrainians, completely destroyed cities and infrastructure, and disruptions of public services like healthcare and education. 
While there is some hope that the war will end in the foreseeable future, the damage has already been done to Ukraine and the nation will have to rebuild, which will likely take years if not decades to accomplish. Nations around the world will always change, some becoming more stable and others unfortunately becoming more unstable. While humanity has evolved over the last thousands of years, social struggles still exist, leading to geopolitical and diplomatic instability. Another concern is that in an advanced world, several nations possess nuclear weapons and according to some, if the Third World War were to happen, nuclear use would be a distinct possibility. But, optimistically, let's hope the unstable nations discussed in this video become stabilized. That concludes this week's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you would like to leave your feedback, please do so in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoy geography, both physical and human geography, you'll like this channel. So be sure to subscribe to my channel our world, our planet, our home to view more videos. Until next time.